You ever just wish you could think about a song and make it play? Born free, free as a bird now. And I learned my lesson with snakes. They can be faster than you think. I got chased by one once. I had to, like, I had to book it. <laughs> Guy doesn't go. Oh man, that thing started to get ready to lunge. So he's beautiful. Yeah, cool guy. He got in striking position. He was gonna bite their axle. Yeah, you're a bad boy, huh? You're a bad boy. Can't let no SUV mess with you, huh? <laughs> it's beautiful out. I love the world. Oh yeah, beautiful day in North Carolina. Jack is back. This is Jack Brisk coming to you live from the Crystal Coast. We're gonna go on a little ride today and uh, it's been a long time since I've been on here and yeah. A little over a year since I last vlogged. What's up, Horsey? Whoa, you don't like the bike, look at that. Yeah. Anyway, um, so yeah, it's been a crazy year. Let me shut my helmet so you guys can hear me, right? We recording? Yeah, we're recording. So, yeah, it's been a crazy year. Uh, full disclosure, I've gone through a divorce. That's over with and done with. Um, yes, it was very dramatic, and yes, it was a difficult thing to do. But I am now officially free, and I am single, um, and it's what it is. So, time to move on, time to pick up where I left off, and this is my first vlog since then. And we're just gonna take a little ride today to see how it goes. I'm testing the equipment. I've had the GoPro put away for a year, year and a half, whatever that is, and it is out, and uh, I think it's working good. I'm gonna check the audio when I get home, check the video quality, all that. I actually lost my camera for a long time in the move and all the hustle and bustle, and I thought it was gone for good, and the other day, I found it, tucked away behind a box, in a closet, and sure enough, it's all there, baby. Except for my chargers, I'm still missing my charger bank, but oh well. So yeah, another lovely day. I got a lot of plans for the future, um, and I think I'm gonna take you guys along with me and see what we can make out of this channel. Um, right now, um, every single viewer is important. I'm happy to have every last one of you. I do love you and appreciate you, and I value your lives. I value your freedom. I value the country that I'm in. I'm so blessed for it. Um, and I look forward to doing other things too. Um, I kind of have some ideas of, at the end of the year, um, going and visiting um, someplace like the Philippines. Beautiful, beautiful country. I wouldn't mind doing a moto vlog with it. I'm not sure if I'm gonna bring this bike. I think it more be, would be more advantageous just to rent a bike while I'm there and bring my equipment. Maybe I need to bring the helmet because it's a special mount, but I'll figure something out. Bring my equipment and do a vlog on the road. Maybe I'll do the little glue on top of the helmet thing and do a uh, voiceover, but I prefer to do it as we drive because I think the as we drive experience is better. You can see more, you get my instant reactions to things, we stop off, you know, on the side of the road, maybe visit a coconut stand or, or whatever it may be. Who knows what we're gonna see? But yeah, so that's an idea I have. I wanna do that. In the meantime, it's time to do what we do here because not everybody that I'm talking to right now has been to the Crystal Coast in North Carolina. We have Atlantic Beach, we have Emerald Island. We have a lot of beautiful places. People drive pretty far to come do their thing. And uh, so I think it might be fun to do. And we'll just hang out and talk, get to know each other, and see how it goes. It's a beautiful day. It is a Saturday. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna go down by the water here. There's a boat launch. Not too far away. Let's see how that looks. I bet you it's busy. It's really busy. It's a beautiful sunny day again. Um, right on the uh, shoreline of the Atlantic Ocean. And it is 85 degrees out. So my guess, considering it's the beginning of summer here, my guess is there's a lot of people down there getting ready to have a good time or being as it's like 2 o'clock in the afternoon, already having a good time. I like when I take my boat out I like to do that during um, during the week when possible after work hours or maybe before because there's nobody down here you 
to get down here now, and I'm pretty sure you can see it's packed. But uh, sometimes, you know, when it's busy on the water, it's more fun, it's more exciting. Crank up the stereo, put your earbuds in or whatever, and uh, you got, you know, hundreds of people. You just gotta be careful, because when the water is that busy, things get a little crazy, and people get a little crazy. And sometimes, you know, I imagine some of them out there are getting a little drunk, too. Um, not something you can really do here, legally. Well, it's like driving a car, you get pulled over, you're gonna be in trouble. So that's not something I partake in, but the truth is, I'm gonna be honest with you, if it were legal, I would definitely wanna uh, put down a couple of beers out, in a, out on the bay, um, in the intercoastal waterway, just fishing or hanging out or swimming. But alas, it's not legal. Although I think it probably is legal if you're the passenger. Like, unlike a car where you can't drink in the car, I think if the boat's parked, you can drink in the boat. But I'd have to check that law out. Don't take my word for it. Err on the side of caution. It's beautiful out. I love the world. We are at early, uh, almost mid. Yeah, you know what? It's, 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 it's the end of May. So we're in mid. 2021 the pandemic here in the United States of America is pretty much lifting they lifted the mask mandates and vaccines are available for whoever wants one and so I think the hysteria should stop if you're afraid of the COVID um, then by all means go get your vaccination if you if you think that's a good choice if not wow this place is not busy Wow I cannot believe it's this quiet maybe because most of the morning it was overcast and it looked like thunderstorms were coming i can't believe it's this uh this peaceful right now yeah really nice the jet skier little beach i tell you the funny thing about nice places like this it's been developing for years if you look back in Google Earth, I'm not sure how far back, maybe 10 years ago, this was a dirt parking lot. And of course, now it's a paved parking lot. And all the way up until this year, those no parking signs did not exist. And uh, so I, I went down on the beach with a friend last year and just to go park for a minute. We parked and walked out there, just hang out for a couple minutes. And the state warden, or one of the rangers or something, comes up to us and gives us a hard time and says that we are not allowed to be there. I'm just make sure I'm recording. I am recording. Very good to know it. And he gave us a hard time and said we weren't allowed to be there. Uh, and I said, what? I mean, we're just standing here. He's like, nope, you're not allowed to stand there. You're not allowed to swim. You're not allowed to walk. You're not allowed to be on that beach at all. This parking lot and everything about it is strictly for launching your boat. And I thought to myself, to be honest, guys, what an ass age. What an ass age. Unbelievable. So, it seems to me like whenever we find good things, good places to ride the motorcycle in the dirt, good places to maybe do a little shooting or something, um, it doesn't take too long before someone comes along and decides, you know what, we need to put some more signs up and make some more rules to control people. I'm not a big fan of control. I'd rather put troll than control. So what do I mean by that? It's very simple. I mean, if somebody's breaking the basic rules like rape, murder, stealing, vandalism, illegal dumping, things like that, now they're buzz. Put up a camera, get, catch them something. I'm not a fan of cameras either, but do something to stop the person doing it. Don't put up a sign and stop everybody from standing on that little beach there. Everybody. No one's allowed to do that, technically. I mean, they still do it. The locals go down there and fish, but when that warden comes around, he'll kick them off and he'll tell them they'll find them. Ridiculous. We pay taxes too. I mean, you know, I don't live too far from here and I pay taxes for that thing. Um, so, and it's a state thing too. Everybody in the state pays taxes. Why can't they visit there? So, um, and it's never been a problem by there. There's never more than two or three people on that beach at a time. Maybe some local uh, grandma or something brings her grandchild down here. They throw the fishing rods in. The, the kid wades in the water. It's, it's a real beautiful thing. It's a family thing. But, uh, so yeah. Still a nice spot though. Great place to launch a boat. And it's free for, for, uh, for everybody, not just locals. Again, this is Jack Brisk back, looking for a whole lot of new adventures. I want to take you guys out of the country again, just like when we went to St. Kitts and Puerto Rico. Uh, I want to do the same thing. We brought the quads that time, actually we rent some quads. 
and uh, I just want to check the world out. You know, I'm I'm single, I'm free, I have the opportunity to do so, and I think it's uh, time to do so. I really want to. A thing that's in my heart. I don't know how that'll work, and I've seen people doing it online with Patreon. Perhaps we can set some people up if you have the same heart as me and you want to help other people. Um, guess when a system going when, when I am exploring these places when we find people in need that maybe we can find a way to help them if they're living in their uh, their little bamboo hut or living in pri uh, primitive conditions or they're hurt and, and they need something I mean, I'm not talking about donating to the alcoholic on the side of the road I'm talking about situations where we have whole families little children living in squalor that we could do something for as rich Westerners you know I mean I'm not rich by any means I wish I was I do it myself but I'm not but uh, and most of you guys aren't either but you know ten dollars from one person 20 from another I mean ten dollars in a place like some places in Mexico or ten dollars in some places like the Philippines is a lot you can buy a lot you, know, you take a hundred dollars and um, that's like having 500 here you can do so much with that money to help people and so I'd love to do that if, if I have the ability to do that when I'm traveling to help people out maybe in a small way and if you guys were to contribute and we we're to step it up and do something bigger in a bigger way I just would absolutely adore that I mean I can't think of a better way to spend your time meeting new people and and when you find that right family that right person in need helping them out yeah 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 I think that'd be really good I mean, some of the images I'll see uh, when I watch vloggers online are a little heartbreaking. You see a whole family like laying on a sidewalk on cardboard, and you wonder why they're like that. But it's not like living in America or the European Union or even a lot of other places where you say, well, get your ass up and get a job. Like America right now, there's abundance of jobs because nobody's working because they're paying everybody to stay home, which is absolutely absurd. People need p uh, workers, but the workers aren't there to have, and we have abundance of people on unemployment. But that's another story for another time. But it's a situation in these uh, countries where they don't have very much of an opportunity. I mean, they can gather some wild coconuts and sell them on the side of the road, maybe buy some vegetables, walk down the street, hope somebody buys them. I mean, really desperate situations. And in some countries, like, the only thing that's really available is they walk around the streets. I mean, we're talking, like, 8-year-old kids, 10-year-old kids younger with their families walking the streets 8, 10 hours a day just collecting plastic, different kinds of plastic to throw in a bin and bring back so they can get their dollar or two dollars a day so they can buy rice to eat that. Yeah, it's, 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 it's so... If you see those images, try not to harden your heart because it's not the same as seeing the guy sitting next to the 7-Eleven with a help sign, help wanted sign on it, begging for money or food. And he should probably go, and uh, everybody's got their issues, I respect that too, but he should probably go get that job at 7-Eleven or whatever the store is. That's the way I see it. You know, you gotta work. Even, even biblically, the Bible says if you don't work, you don't eat. But sometimes there's just nothing there. Or you're so beat up you've lost your home you know so there are there are times that a little generosity from me and you and and hopefully my viewers someday we can use that to 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 fund some people and maybe help them to get their first step up in the world maybe they get a sorry sorry store is what they call it in those places like india and uh you know in the philippines which is a beautiful beautiful place um, and, and these are like little convenience stores that people set up themselves in, in front of their house. They're very primitive, but they make some money. And it doesn't take a lot of money to buy some rice, maybe occasional bread, maybe once in a while splurge on some meat, you know? So we can help. We can be part of the solution. And we can be part of the solution in a lot of ways. And I hope that I can be. I hope that I can be a voice of inspiration to to somebody out there right now in America or in Europe right now listening to this, some of the English-speaking countries out there, people in Norway and other places that can hear me, uh, chances are you're sitting in front of a computer now anyway in, a, in an air-conditioned or heated house and you're fine anyway. But if you're not, there's nothing you can't do. If you set your mind to it, if you open your, your heart to the possibility that you can, not you can't, um, there are always opportunities. And I know you're like, that's easy for you to say, Jack, what do you know? You don't know about my life, and I do. But I don't know. I'm sorry, I don't know about your life. You're right. Everybody's situation is unique. But I've known people that were drug addicts and alcoholics and all kinds of other things. And they, too, can do whatever they set their mind to. Human beings have unlimited potential. We have the ability to strive if we just believe that we can. And that limiting belief, that 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 
roadblock in our heads. Like right now, even this. I mean, I always tell myself, I can't do a blog. I don't have the voice for it. I, I just can't do this. You know, I don't have the right appearance for it. I just, whatever, whatever excuses I told myself. I like my privacy. I, you know, I don't want to be a celebrity or anything like that. And I don't, by the way. I don't want to be, I don't want to be, but if, if this is successful, then people are going to know who I am. So what? It's what it is. But if I can do some good at that, it's good. So if you feel like you can't do it, you can. The first thing, you know, like I was talking to somebody recently, a really, really great guy. And he's like, uh, we were talking about this very f same thing, success, the possibility of doing something more. And so he said to me, he says, yeah, someday I want to. I have these dreams. He has, he has good dreams, by the way, all kinds of things about a little small business, online business, offline business, all these things he wants to do. It's really cool. But he says, I can't do that right now because I have obligations. And I said, what are those obligations? He said, he has to work. I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's good. Keep that job. Don't don't dare quit it unless you have something 100% lined up. And even then, I wouldn't recommend quitting it until you have an established line of second income. But and he's got to you know he's got to pay his rent and other things. So he obliga has obligation. I said, well, what do you do on the weekend? And uh, he does his own thing. But does he work on the weekend? He does not work on the weekend. And that's not a that's not a criticism, by the way. I don't want to work on the weekend. Nobody does. But I'm like, you don't. So you have two full days, two 24-hour days in which you could accomplish something. And uh, he's like, yeah. And I said, you go to work, you're at work by nine o'clock in the morning, but you, this particular guy, he wakes up at like five o'clock in the morning. Wow, so you have five, six, seven, eight, you have three hours to take your shower. And, and in that three hours, what could you possibly do if you're working on like an online business or you're drafting your dream, um, whatever it is, or maybe, maybe on the weekends, you just get that extra job so you can get those extra couple of bucks. And he's like, but I have no money to invest in anything. And I said, it, it doesn't take money to start. It takes a dream. It takes the desire. And so as you go through your year and you're working your difficult job, you just bit by bit look for that opportunity. You think, you study online, you look at how other people have made money and you try different things. Um, and again, I'm not trying to make it sound too easy. It's not an instant panacea. It was hard for me to build my business and do the things that I do, really hard. I mean, it took 18 hour days for like decades. <laughs> take a long time to do this stuff you know it's it's not instant but it's a pleasure and it feels good doing it and even if you just get a better job than you have now and you make a little bit more money to have a little bit more comfort room that's good too so you can always do better you don't have to settle for living in a cardboard box not in a, not in this world not in our country you don't have to settle for that unless you have some really serious problem like severe handicap or something. Again, I understand that, but there are social services for that. They can help you with that too. So never give up, guys. You just got to you gotta want to drive forward. You got to push. You got to fight. I mean, life's a fight. Life's a battle. It's a struggle for survival every day, and most of us never really look at that. But thank God we live in a, where we struggle to survive here and not, you know, with a with a spear and a bow and arrow trying to survive against uh, a wild tiger or something, right? We just got to work. And we got to work for it, man. I'm praying for you guys. I hope that you guys make it. I hope that you find something. I hope you find just a little bit of inspiration. But you don't have to sit down and take it. Now, I know it's hard. We're, we're, spoiled, uh, we're spoiled, spoiled Westerners, right? We are spoiled Westerners. And we have, you know, uh, well-fed tummies. Really well-fed tummies, right? And uh, mine's pretty big. It's pretty satisfied. And that slows me down, by the way. But uh, there are a lot of opportunities. You just got to search for them. You got to dream a little bit. And then, if you dream a little bit, and you fight, and you strive, maybe just someday, you can stop dreaming and start living the dream. It can happen. Did you know 80% of the self-made millionaires in the United States of America never went to college, and many of them never even graduated high school? You said, but Jack, how can that be? Well, it just is. And, and, and the answer to how it can be is pretty simple because success does not come from just an education. In fact, I, I'll dare say success does not come from an education. Success comes from within. It comes from a drive, a desire, a passion, a hunger. You know, if you want something bad enough, you'll find it. If your lifeline, a lifelong dream is to go live in Utah or <laughs> Alaska or Colorado, I mean, pick a place. It doesn't matter where it is. If that's your lifelong dream, and if you take steps toward that every day, you know, learn about the culture in that state, learn about the housing prices, look for jobs in that state. If you do it every day, it won't be long before you'll find that before you'll find that opportunity, perhaps to go. 
Yeah. Well, I know. I know. There's all kinds of, you know, extenuating circumstances. You have family. You have kids and things. But through that, find what you can do. Don't talk about what you can't do. Don't focus on the negative, man. Focus on what you can do. So, yeah. So, again, I'm a little, I guess, juiced up this morning, feeling good. I'm out on the bike. I haven't been out on the bike much this year because of the thing I was going through. And uh, it's nice out here, and I'm starting to feel the burn to do something more and more passionate. And I hope that my passion can relate to something good in your life. And if nothing else, I hope that as I do the things that I hope I'm going to do, I really want to do. I haven't, I haven't committed them to paper like I should, and I probably will soon. But. But if I can do the things that I can bring you along with me and we can have a good time together and you can sit on your couch or your computer or on your bus trip to work, whatever it is, and watch me on your phone, and maybe I can just bring some, bring some um, escape for you for a little while just to see new things. I'm gonna take you down to a park here and show you this one as well. But I wanna, like I said, I wanna bring you places. It's not gonna all be motorcycle rides and helmet talk. It's gonna be, well, whatever I can think of that uh, hopefully you're interested with. And by the way, I'd love to hear your comments. What do you want me to do? Well, I'm in North Carolina on the East Coast, Eastern North Carolina. Uh, would you like me to go somewhere and see something? Would you like me to go to the aquarium, go to the pier, go to somewhere else uh, and show you what it looks like? Because maybe you're thinking about going on vacation there. Maybe that helps. It's such a beautiful day. It's so nice that winter is over. Yeah. This place down here is pretty nice. Um, I don't know. Am I in uh, Cedar Point? I think I'm in the town of Cedar Point. I'm not 100% sure. But it's Hammocks State Beach Park. You can look that up online. And it's a nice park. And you can do some walking. It's got several miles of woods trails like and that kind of stuff back there. Uh, that ends up along the waterfront in several different places. So you can um, bring your your girlfriend, your lover, your your dog, whatever. Um, I don't think they allow bicycles on the trail. But you, and you go on beautiful hikes back there. Also, they have, what do you call it, um, a ferry. There's a ferry there that takes you out to Bear Island. It's a pretty cool place. It's quite a few miles long. And you can go hang out on the beach or you can go camping there. You can rent camping spots. And I absolutely love this spot here. If you guys are looking for a place to go camping with your boat, oh my gosh, there's sites out there on the island that you can, after you, after you register and you, you know, you're set up for it, you can drive out there right on the edge of the Atlantic Ocean. Like here's the sandbar, Bear Island is the Atlantic Ocean, the inner side is the bay. We're hitting the bay now. So you can go in there and you can set up your tent and you can sit on your shore and you could fish and catch sharks, crabs, mussels, clams, bluefish, you know, whatever's there and running into time. It's quite a beautiful place. So there's the sign. I'm going to pass it first. It's the Hammocks Beach State Park. State Park. And this is a little gated community down here. Some Pretty um, nice houses. Not my helmet. Hopefully, I got a good view here. And that's the bay down there. We'll get a look at it from the park itself. But yeah, that's nice. It's lovely out there. And as the summer gets on, you get into July and then August, the water is so warm. What a beautiful place to swim. And if uh, you're visiting America, or you're just visiting the North Carolina area, I think we have very nice people here. Um, I was kind of stunned. I was in New York, and then I moved to Colorado for a little while. And then I came here. And what I found here, um, by the way, there's a boat ramp here. There's a fee for this boat ramp in the state park. But if you want to bring your boat down here, you can. But what I found here is the people are polite. So one of my first experiences was going into the convenience store to get a soda when I'm still tired from the road. And the, I find the clerk saying things like, darling, go ahead, go ahead. Well, he's just sitting there then. But um, they're like, thank you, sir. You have a great day, darling. You know, things like that. And um, 
yeah, you're like New Jersey, New York. You don't get a whole lot of darlings and uh, and things like that. And the politeness level is different. So down here, it's 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 generally pretty polite, and people are pretty nice. A little boat launch here. Wow, guys, I wish you could smell the salt water right now. Oh my gosh, it smells so sweet. Oh, so beautiful. So you have multiple tiers here. Here you got the launch right there where he's about to go. You have the outer area. That boat out there and GoPro, it's pretty hard to see, but there's a boat out there, and the boat out there is in what we call the intercoastal waterway. It runs up the east coast of the United States, and uh, it's a nice passageway. Beyond that, we have a bunch of uh, how do I how do I say it? Estuaries. Um, hmm. Like, you know, um, a lot of um, marsh type thing, which is uh, which is salt water. And then if you can see way out in the back, you see taller trees really in the distance, in the horizon. That is Bear Island. Just beyond that is the Atlantic Ocean. And on that island out there is the place that you can go camping. So yeah, pretty cool place. Definitely worth a, vi worth a visit. If you're coming to North Carolina, it's definitely worth a visit. You can look up Hammocks State Park, uh, Hammocks Beach State Park. And uh, for a small fee, you come to the office here and you could jump on that ferry and go explore the island. Spend the afternoon on the, on the beaches of Atlanta Ocean. Atlantic Ocean, nice unspoiled beaches. Let's go a little deeper into the park. Someday, if I get uh, my belly trimmed down for summer, uh, I took that year to deal with that situation I first started talking about. My, my, uh, well, I'll say it one more time, my divorce. And so it was a long year. I gained a lot of weight. So I gained like 40 pounds and I need to lose that. And uh, as I lose that, it might be nice to take you for a little hike back here in the trails and show you some of the, the highlights of that, uh, that trail system. Uh, I don't want to do it today though. I'm not prepared for it. And uh, and it's a lot of work to do that big trail. So let's see, we got a bunch of people here. And people doing a photo shoot down here. It's like a wedding. Oh, look at that. A wedding or a prom looking thing. Probably graduation. So these people are all getting off the ferry now, I believe. Yeah. And uh, they were out hanging out by the ocean, swimming and playing and doing the things. As a matter of fact, the young man with the blue shirt looks like his lower half of his shirt's wet. So yeah, here's the main office. You can call them uh, and set something up, but it's a state park. And there's a little museum in there, a little tiny thing that has different animals and creatures that you can check out. And if you don't want the ferry and you don't want to check out the little museum and you don't want to go for a hike, we have one more option over here. Probably can't see it too well, but there are kayak rentals. I think they have um, wakeboards or kayak rentals, but definitely kayak rentals right back there. You might see some blue behind those reeds there. And that's where you get your kayak, and there's a beautiful kayak designed ramp system right down this path here. And you could put your kayaks out there. Really nice, beautiful. So this little park here could easily account for one or two days of your vacation to this area. Whether you live in the state or you're coming from somewhere else. I mean, it's beautiful to spend time by the ocean. Absolutely love it. I smell the smells I have now. I smell the salt water and I smell suntan lotion. Yeah, so I said people with suntan lotion, I smell it. It smells nice. It reminds me of summer. I wonder how long this has been so far. I bet I'm close to a half hour. Which is probably enough for a first blog. Vlog. Not blog. Vlog. I was watching a movie the other day and they're like, Oh, you're vlogging? That's so yesterday. Okay, okay, that's fine. What's today then? What do we have? What is what is beyond video log? Video blogging. What is it? Like virtual 3D vlogging? I don't know. 
But they do have those uh, cool cameras, the 360 cameras. That's a consideration. Like, I get one of those 360 cameras, potentially, and it's, it shows you, like, like if you haven't done it yet, how it works is you can watch the video on YouTube, and, whoa, snake, woohoo, woohoo. All right, you guys want to see that. I gotta learn my snakes a little better, too, because I don't know what kind of snake he is. And I learned my lesson with snakes. They can be faster than you think. I got chased by one once. I had to, I had to book it. <laughs> Guy doesn't go. Oh man, that thing started to get ready to lunge. So he's beautiful. Yeah, cool guy. He got in striking position. He was going to bite their Axel. Yeah, you're a bad boy, huh? You're a bad boy. Can't let no SUV mess with you, huh? <laughs> All right. That was cool. I always like to watch, the, check out the wildlife. You know, P.T. Barman, P.T. Barnum said something once. Um, he was Barnum and Bailey's circus. I don't know when that was. What was it? 1900s? Like 100 years ago or whatever. But he had a famous saying. You put an animal or a child on the stage, you will have the audience mesmerized every time. So, I guess there's some truth to that. Everybody likes a cute puppy dog or a kitty cat. I like the wildlife a little better. So in case you're wondering, I am driving a 2018 CRF 250L. I bought brand new. Let me close my helmet. Make sure that's loud for you guys. <laughs> CRF 250L. Um, it's fantastic. I get about 68 miles to the gallon. 60, 68 depends. It's great in the trails. I, I know there's better bikes in the trails, but it's a dual-purpose bike. It's called a dual sport, which means it's a dirt bike for trails, and I get to have the lights. And, do the street legal thing and so I can go anywhere I want and the cool thing about this is ugh, hit a bug off me the cool thing about this thing is I can drive this and I can see a trail and I can just drive down the trail no trailers you don't have to lug your bike there or anything so that's pretty cool so you lose a little bit because it weights a little more um, from a strictly racing dirt bike like a two-stroke to something like this but the freedom I gain at my age, in my stage in the, the, the development, you know, I'm in my early 50s, I just turned 50 recently, um, 52 actually, so, but my, my, um, in my stage in the game, I want fun, I want to have fun. So, a lot of guys like strictly street bikes. Yeah, all right, I dig it, I, I get it, I get it. Did I really just say dig it? <laughs> I get it though. Um, <coughs> they're nice, they're fast, a lot faster than this 250, um, but, I can't go on the dirt with them, at least not in any reason. So this takes me on the gravel roads and dirts any times I want. So um, I, I want to have fun. I want to do both. I don't want to be limited by anything. I'm kind of a freedom guy in general. So this gives me more freedom than uh, than a dirt bike or a street bike exclusively. Um, I do though with my body size. The 250 is plenty fast. It does a good job. It does everything I need. I really should have a 450 though. Yeah. I could use a little more power. But I love you guys and I appreciate your interest in this video that um but uh but I watch videos like this all the time and I enjoy them. So, if you're interested in that idea that I'll set a Patreon up someday and I'll use some of that money to help the homeless here in America and when I'm overseas uh, and I'm doing my little tours and stuff, help the homeless in one of those countries like the Philippines, which would be fantastic. Um, then by all means, like and subscribe and when the time comes, I'll open up Patreon. I, I, I welcome you to help me. Help me help them and uh, help me on my travel so I can bring you more content. And so coming from beautiful Eastern North Carolina. This is Jack Brisk, signing out. I'll catch you on the flip side.